arguably the number one. Are you going to say arguably the number one? I mean, I think that's pretty much a given. I think it's pretty given that it's the best in Ohio. You say it's, it's arguably the best in what? the nation. Really? They and Chicago have like an ongoing Twitter feud about which one of them is the best argument. No kidding. But better than like what you have in like New York or LA or I'm trying to think of what's the one that, that, that was it the Guggenheim or something? Or? What are you guys talking about? New York. Hmm. Art museum, the art museums? The Cleveland Art Museum. Is better than they, MoMA? They claim to be. Cool. I it think is. it's a matter of opinion. Yeah. Well, the, you know, the, the, the East Coasts can't admit that there, there might be something really good out here in the Midwest. Mm -hmm. But the reality is that it is is nice. I don't, I don't know if I would compare it to the Metropolitan Museum of Modern Art or anything like that. Right. But it's pretty nice. It's marketing. I mean, that's right. I've been to all three. Yeah. I've been to Chicago. I've been to Cleveland. You know, I mean, it, 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 if you, know, you could never, you could never achieve a museum like that today in Cleveland that was built by the industrialists after mm -hmm. World War yeah. II. Yeah. I mean, it's like Youngstown. Youngstown's got a beautiful little art gallery. Over Museum. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Wait, is that Youngstown or is or there's it's Youngstown right down you right in downtown Youngstown? Oh, okay. Has it has a terrific little gallery. It's got some pretty remarkable pieces. Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm just trying to think. It had outside of the Boy Scouts, it had one of the uh, one of the larger collections of uh, Norman Rockwell art. I remember reading about that before? Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. In Youngstown, really fantastic. Really fantastic. What about the Akron? I mean, I drive by that periodically. It's nice. I mean, it, the outside looks amazing, but I've never been inside that. I've never it's been nice. inside that. Yeah. yeah. You think that there'd be some sort of reciprocity, and you know, you and Katie could go there, but oh, we could get them free. Okay. <laughs> we just never have. <laughs> they have. Um, it was Carnegie, by the way, who mm, built yes. the Cleveland Museum. Yeah. Oh, really? Akron, yeah. The Akron one. Oh, yeah. Because okay. uh, two beer festivals in the summer. Mm. Who built, cool. who built the uh, the big the other second? Is it New York? The Frick Museum in New York was by the Fricks of Pittsburgh Steel fame. Hmm. Yeah. I think it was Carnegie's partner. Yeah, I was going to say because Carnegie was used uh, to fantastic collection. Apparently, hmm. never been there. But Interesting. I don't know. I'll probably be super glue myself to one of the paintings. <laughs> <laughs> protest something. Yes, uh, fossil fuels, right? Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> they they, they super glued them. themselves to the wall next to the painting. I will say that I did not find the Mona Lisa very impressive. That's what I saw. Well, it's more that you walk into the room, and it's, it's rubbish. This huge display in the middle of the room, uh -huh. and the painting is like. I don't know, maybe the size of one of this comp these computer monitors. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, something yeah. would have been bigger than that. That's what I. That's why I was. So it's like it's like. But big? what really got me is that the hallway to walk into the Mona Lisa's uh -huh. gallery has the Napoleon, the creation <coughs> of Napoleon series, mm -hmm. which are that's like huge yeah. paintings the size of the floor of this room, <laughs> incredibly detailed. And then you walk into the room with the Mona Lisa. It's like, and it's kind of like uh, small and unimpressive <laughs> compared to that. Is this a copy? Suggestion on these shirt. Temporary signs. Why don't you put in any kind of ordinance? Whoever puts that in. Mayor, how are you? All right, good afternoon. Email nice to see it. Give you the particular. Good to see you. And you're putting it out. Matthew, how's it going? Okay, you didn't get the memo? It's been a while. I've got a number of times. Describe it. Jacket. This is it's, it's starting to be a jacket thing now. It's a weird going back here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can't do it. I'm sorry. listening to the senior right. emeritus. Yeah, we're not going the elder statesman. Right. But he has a jacket. You know, as yeah. so I was saying, so you've got your sport coat on. I do, but you know something? Don't get the I, word out. But there was a time when I would have been executed for wearing a pair of jeans to a council meeting. Oh, no, that, yeah. That's true. Really? Oh, yeah. I mean, we used to all wear coats and ties for council. Right? You can say that. Let's bring it back. I run warm. Do you run I do, I do. 
Yeah. It was, I it was, it was, I was so frigid. You, know you know what he's going to do next time? And it is noticeable. It was 63 degrees in my office this yeah. morning. Yeah. I, keep I didn't notice it for an hour and a half until after I sat in there yeah, and had this bad. shirt. You know what he's going to do? It's funny. Well, you're going to have a smoking shirt. That would be... That's not bad. It's not bad. Satin jacket. Like a Komodo or something. That would be Maybe we could have come out The mayor of Hudson's oh, got no, no, no. I'm still here. <laughs> Always want to check, you know. And then post it again. because uh, I at the center. point have read that like, it's a psychological well, thing. That more about blue it. makes people yeah, more I'm more I'm more more. Yeah. Have you ever heard that? Well, like, it's a psychological thing that like, a blue is like a, seems to be a problem. You know, I'm threatening color or something like that. Well, well, I think like they, I blue think for like that's, that's why these politicians don't wear like a blue suit. I mean, I've heard that like painting a room blue calms people. Oh really? Not that well, like just wearing blue or pink. Yeah. I know you do. We have GPS in this painting room. Painting. I'll bet you oh, yeah. 99 percent of painting. people. Uh, some football stadiums. Yeah. Yeah. Pink oh, I've heard that. Yeah. Yep. Customers. They don't need a sign in the place. No, really? That's not the purpose of the sign. I would not have guessed that. The purpose of the sign is advertising. I've heard that some Remind prisons would do that too. There is a Starbucks. Oh, don't do it right now. Is that true? There was, was Joe Arpaio. He would get but pink underwear. Yeah. Pink yeah. Pink is it right. true that the visitor locker room is not getting done yeah. at Memorial yeah. Stadium? Yeah. <laughs> There's, I'm telling you, there's like a long standing history about each of them done theirs since I think they built the stadium in 1930 or something. And half of it was painted pink. It's just petty. Yeah. Is this replacing this? Yes. Okay, so this is good. Because uh, John got sick. So. Okay. Hello, how are you? Well, we're trying to warm up, huh? Yeah. The more I do, Jenny? That's a little cold. It's good to see you. It's a little cold. We're doing shit. I guess I'm going to show you. 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 As far as I'm aware, they're still coming out. Yeah. Um, Although they did not say Hi, hey, what I do. The food bank. Oh, okay. <laughs> that, actually, we just talked about. Do you want me to introduce her? Um, or you can't even really. It doesn't matter. Okay. You can use the I can do it out here. Okay. They did not send me any audio visuals. Okay. okay. Um, I bumped this in. Let me you make that quick job. They're a good program. I don't know what they have to do. Oh, oh there you go. Well, I wonder if it's like a stabilization or something. Might be because I'm new. Yeah. I'm relocating. Oh, no. It says it's still connected. It's just not shaking. I do think that falls under the same category of don't shake the baby. Don't, don't shake, shake the owl. Is food bank one word or two word? I know I made it two words, but now I'm dabbing myself. Walsh has a once a semester, once a year volunteer day that uh, I used to do with my residents. Oh, that's cool. I, I mean, I've been to the one up in Akron, which is awesome, but I've been down to the one down on Canton's terribly impressive. Oh, I've never been to Canton, I've only been to the Akron. Okay. I didn't even know they actually had that. It's where, um, it's where fishies used to be. And he was just like, oh, it's doing That's right. We didn't get uh, didn't get phone books for you to sit on. No. A couple of cushions. Yes. Okay. We're running all those cake ups. We could duct tape a bunch when we get it. There you go. Great.
So Dave, yes, sir. requiring websites would require changing websites. I don't know. Adding a website, not required, just adding websites for those that have them available. They've already submitted them. That's it. Right now, we don't, we don't even ask. But, uh, yeah, but we had them. Well, we had them on the other form. One that you was going to attach. Sure. You sure? I'd like to say this. Something about his family. Something like some internal thing. Like, uh, it's great to know. If I had websites, I would have put them in there. <laughs> I mean, for some of them, you can get the website out of their email address, but right yeah, now we don't. I'm not doing the extra effort to do it. Or you think maybe like a chamber of commerce? Yeah. Well, it's only the registration, but it's just contractors. It'll cost you. You'll see it's such a nice picture of it. That's kind of my idea. You know what's going on. I think it's great. It was always me, me, me. That's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, we, don't, we don't ask them for websites right now. Uh, if you're someone with contacts. I should have worn my contacts. He's going to be around. I didn't wear those scripts for two years. Oh, I wish they were on the website. Yes, I suppose it was. You're just this work. You're not sold to your husband. This is Tasha from the Food Bank. So Hi, this is Matt, Matt Stark, Matt, 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 Matt,
Mm -hmm. Yes, that is fantastic. That's so much. Thank you. I was trying to figure out what the number six was, but I it's realized it's on your agenda. Yeah. So yeah. That's yeah. wonderful. Thank you. Thing, you know, Jamie's oh. best friend yeah. ever. There you go. Okay. <laughs> okay. Very good. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Well, good to see you. Again. This is our mayor. Uh, yes, I am familiar with you. How are you? Okay. Thanks for joining us tonight. Absolutely. This is Patrick Moriarty. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Yeah
It's the two, the second one, the one that's better. Is it? Sure it is. Patrick, I had it. It was a little disappointed when I thought the end of it. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. People do that all the time. I suggest it. Go over it. They'll get you all squared away and set up. Just a good way to kill a couple hours a week. We have so many things. How do we know how much the pests But it almost pops, it should. A little pop up should show up. Because it charges on the top. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Limited knowledge. See? That's what I have. That's all? Or at least I'm starting to forget things that I thought I did. I do, I do. Okay, gotcha. We're really good. <laughs> I now call to order the North Canton City Council meeting of November 14th, 2020. The time is 7 p.m. Ben, uh, we can, first we'll do opening prayer. Uh, yeah. Carol. We rise from prayer and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, bow your heads, Almighty God. Last week we marked two events of great importance in our civic life an election, and Veterans Day. Tonight, we give thanks for our freedom as a free people to choose our path. And we give thanks for all those who, under arms, have defended that freedom. And we express our eternal gratitude for those who have purchased that freedom was sacrifice. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ben, would you please call the roll? Member Matheny? Here. Member McLeister? Here. Here. Member Warren? Here. Member Stroya? Here. Member Revolt? Here. Five present, members Orr and Wyrick absent. Motion to excuse member members Wyrick and Orr. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, can I have a motion and a second to approve as presented minutes from October 24th, 2022 public hearing. Committee of the Whole and City Council and the October 2020 Finance Report. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> Motion carries. Um, at this time, we'll have a special presentation from Teresa Ledrick. Did I pronounce that right? Tasha. 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 Oh, it's okay. I was focused on the last name. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Um, she's from the uh, Akron Canton Food Bank, and Jamie. Um, was the one that uh, asked her to speak, right? Yes. Okay. Yep. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. How's everyone doing this evening? Good. Good. Thank you. All right. Get back to my notes here. Okay. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. It's okay. <laughs> I was like, oh, it goes up and down. Good evening. Um, my name is Tasha Ledrick. And uh, again, I work with the Akron Canton Regional Food Bank, um, and I'm excited to present tonight. Um, so, I primarily work in the area of scheduling volunteers. So, I will speak with everyone um, about um, the opportunity to volunteer with the food bank. But I just wanted to uh, give a brief uh, presentation, um, providing a little bit of an overview. Um, and I'm really excited to actually chat tonight because 
I've been a resident of North Canton now. My husband and I have been here for over 20 years, and uh, so it's it's nice to come and uh, present at City Council. So um, thank you again for having me. Thank you, uh, Councilman McLeister. Um, through volunteering, um, he asked if I could um, come and be present um, here at uh, Council, and I said absolutely. I know also know Council person uh, Stephanie Warren. Um, she volunteers uh, with the food bank and connects um, her leadership Stark County um, organization um, with um, volunteer opportunities with the food bank. So um, it's great to see see you and Mayor Wilder. Thank you for having having us having me here tonight. Um, again, my primary responsibility uh, with the Akron Kent Regional Food Bank is I schedule volunteers. I schedule non-corporate group volunteers, um, which would entail school groups, church groups, friend groups, neighbors, um, civic groups. I have Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts that schedule volunteer opportunities with us. Um, and we have, in the last year, opened a new facility in Stark County. It's in Canton. Um, and uh, so it's, it's been really nice to be in Stark County. Again, I live um, here in Stark County. And um, I have a colleague that assists with scheduling our corporate groups. So if you are ever looking for volunteer opportunities, um, please reach out. We'd be happy to connect you with those opportunities. Now, just to bring you uh, a little bit of information as to who we are, what we do at the Akron Canton Regional Food Bank, and how that connects to uh, North Canton um, is what I'd like to really focus a little bit on. Um, for those of you who may not be familiar with the Akron Canton Regional Food Bank, um, we have responsibility in eight counties in Northeast Ohio. Uh, those eight counties being Carroll, Holmes, Medina, Portage, Stark, Tuscarawas, um, Summit and Wayne. I didn't use my fingers. I used them <laughs> to, to make sure I got them all, but I believe I captured all. In those eight counties, we have over 600 programs that help us get food out to the community. And those programs um, are organizations, nonprofits that host, whether it's a pantry, whether it's a hot food site, a hot meal site, a youth backpack program, or uh, senior food box programs or other uh, emergency or shelter programs and bringing um, helping to get food from the food bank because as a food bank we are ensuring that good food that's available in the community isn't going to waste and once we have that food in our inventory our programs have the opportunity to see what's on our menu what's in inventory they order those items, and then they take them back to their respective programs, and those programs assist in getting food out to the community. Being here in North Canton, it's possible that you at times have observed a line outside of a church on a pantry day, and it means that someone's going to have access to good, healthy food um, to take home, and that that really good, healthy food uh, didn't go to waste. Um, what we like to express um, at the food bank is that more than enough food is produced to feed everyone. However, it's a matter of helping everyone get access to that food because there may have been a circumstance that affected someone's household. Um, households may be making choices and making decisions on paying a medical bill or buying groceries or it's now cooling down. Your heat's being turned on, probably. That heating bill may go up. How do I pay for groceries? How do I pay for food? Sometimes it's simply an unexpected layoff, and those household bills continue, but that income has a pause. It has a bump. I like to say a bump in the road. And so the food bank ensures, to the best of our ability, that everyone has the access to food, through our programs um, <clears throat> so that those choices that have to be made, you don't have to choose um, to not eat. Choose to pay that car repair so that you can still get to work. And our resources, our, our pantries, our partners assist 
and ensuring you have access to food. Looking on a, <clears throat> a little bit closer to home, um, I just want to point out a few programs in Stark County, in particular in North Canton, um, that help um, in getting food out to the community. If you'll reference the Hunger in Stark County uh, document that I provided, just a little bit of a brief overview. Um, overall in Stark County, um, just over 14%, and this was as of uh, earlier this year. So these numbers may change and fluctuate um, just a bit, um, but please note that um, this, this is pretty close to home. This is Stark County. Um, over 14% overall food insecurity in this immediate area. Looking at child food insecurity, we're looking at just over 19%. And it took me a long time to chat or give tours and talk about children being hungry. That just really hits and see. Okay, so I can't talk about that because it's just, it means so much that children have access to good food, going to school, after school. And um, so here in North Canton, uh, referencing again this document, some of our top partners by, uh, in this county, um, lower, lower on the page, top partners by pound. You'll notice that uh, North Canton Church of Christ is one of our top partners. Um, and overall programs that we have in Stark County. Now this number changes um, and has changed because we are always looking to grow our partnerships. We are always looking to find any pockets of the community where food insecurity, where hunger may exist, and help those programs connect with food from the food bank uh, to get to their organization, to get to their community. So as of March of this year, we had 65 food pantries in Stark County. We had 33 hot meal sites and shelters. We had seven senior citizen programs. We had 27 youth and backpack programs. And we had about 15 other non-emergency programs totaling 147 programs in the immediate Stark County area. And again, those programs are continuing to grow. Um, we are very thankful um, that several programs that had to place a pause on their operations um, were able to continue um, and recover um, post-COVID um, because there was absolute um, an increase in need um, during that time. Um, I don't want to take up too, too much more time, and I definitely want to be um, available for any questions, but I want to be respectful of the overall agenda um, for the council meeting this evening. And I'll, I'll just kind of wrap it up by saying, if you are looking um, for a way to connect with the food bank, um, I would be happy to connect with you by phone, by email. Um, I can leave information. Um, I can leave information with you um, by my business card if, if need be. But um, it's just been uh, a pleasure to meet everyone tonight. And uh, again, Councilman McClister, thank you so much for inviting me. And uh, hopefully I've provided just a little bit of information for anyone who may not have been aware. Um, of the Akron Cancer Regional Food Bank. And like I said, we have the new facility, the new campus down um, on Cherry and Canton. Um, but we have partners right here in North Canton um, that help get food out to the community. Any questions at this time? Right. You know, I'll just throw out that um, if you have not been down to their new facility down in Canton, which Correct me if I'm wrong, is it the site of the old Fishers? What, what road was that on? Absolutely, absolutely. Cherry. So it's on Cherry Avenue yes. Northeast. And yes, so uh, the Stark County campus is mm -hmm. located at the site of the, an old Fisher facility, an old Fisher building. Mm -hmm. And when that facility, if you don't mind, um, sure. I can share just a little bit. When that facility closed years ago, um, it actually created in that immediate community a food mm -hmm. desert. And when we were looking to build a new facility uh, in this area, because our main building is still in Akron, it's in Summit County, 
Um, but again, you heard me say that one of our uh, counties that we're responsible for is Tuscarawas County. That's south of here. We have Wayne County, we have Carroll, we have Holmes. All of those counties with our partners, those partners prior to us opening the Stark County location had to place their order and pick up their orders from our Akron location. That's a lot of wear and tear on vehicles. Gas prices have gone up. Um, and having a, a facility that we were thankful to find that land, um, that facility, we were, it was unfortunate that that Fishers had closed, but being able to find that location and build our new building on that site um, allows us to have access um, to our partners um, in this region a little easier um, than having to travel up through right now just a little bit of construction on 77. <laughs> um, when it's all done, it's going to be amazing. Um, but um, we're excited to, to have that new building. But yes, it is on the site of the old Fishers. Sure, and I was just going to say that it's an absolutely terribly impressive building. Um, absolutely loved it. But one of the things that uh, we had a conversation, my, my company went in to, to volunteer there, I think it was about a, maybe two months ago. Mm -hmm. The thing that, that struck me, and I'm carrying with it, carrying it with me now, is food insecurity knows no zip code, I think was the conversation we had absolutely. afterwards. And I don't know, seeing the fact that possibly 20% or up to 20% of children in our greater community could be affected is, is heartbreaking to me. But that's why I just thought it was so important that, that you came in and you know share a little bit about what you guys are doing that, down there. And I'm, I'm so glad that you took me up on, on that offer. Yeah, so thank, thank you, you very much for coming in. Thank you. Thanks again for having me. Ms. Tasha, also yes. thank you for your presentation. And uh, having this as a resource for Stark County is tremendous. Mm -hmm. Because in our community, I am aware, we have a couple hundred families that are, that are being fed <coughs> through uh, Compassion Delivery, Meals on Wheels, and also through our CARES Pantry you know, at the high school. And I've had the opportunity to volunteer at the Church of Christ. And you have hundreds of families coming through in just a short amount of time. Absolutely. And the Summit, and uh, Faith United Methodist Church. So you're as a resource for all these organizations so that you're right. So those young people are being fed and also the adults that uh, may have some sense of uh, uh, not having that opportunity to, like you say, balance the needs of the family. So thank you for your presentation and mm -hmm. Jamie for organizing it and, and knowing that we have this resource in uh, Stark County. It's just, uh, we're very fortunate that we have this. So thank you very much. Thank you. Just um, one other thing, yes. I think too, uh, that asset of having you in our community and moving from Akron to here, and like you saying, um, all the people that you support, but when we've gone down there, and this is a great opportunity for people who have children, or if you're in a church group, or I mean, any really type of group, the great thing that you do is you don't just say like, here, we're gonna put you to work at this table, you tell them the why, the how, mm -hmm. who we're serving, I mean, I even asked you, and I've been there so many times and brought so many different groups from our signature program to our spot. I mean, we do bring everybody yes, <laughs> to you. Do. Yes. And to see the amount of food, I mean, like you said, to show the impact that you have. But more importantly, it's the stories. I mean, we're, we walk in and you kind of are embarrassed because you are also walking in when there's a line gathering for people that truly need food on that day. And I think I even asked you that day, um, and I've been there many times, and you have different questions each time you go because something you know will affect you. And and you saying how respectful you treat everybody. You don't ask, do you really need it? It doesn't look like it seems like you drove in, in a nice car. Uh, it's again that insecurity. Well, maybe so, but you also can't pay maybe for that car or for that tire that needs done this month, and so you have to substitute. And I I loved you just kind of reminding me and the class members of that and. Um, I know especially for our, our youth academy to impact them at that age. I hope that they can keep taking that through the different um, challenges they have throughout their lives and opportunities that they can serve others. So thank you for being here. Absolutely. And you do an amazing job. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Tasha. Um, Okay, moving on to recognition of the public. At this time, members of the public wishing to address city council may do so. Each speaker will be given five minutes. Comments shall be limited to legislative items appearing on tonight's agenda only. 
The rules of speaking uh, will appear on both screens. This will serve as the only warning for tonight uh, for everybody in attendance. Any violation of the rules will result in objection from the press. Anyone wishing to speak tonight? <coughs> Chuck Osborne, 307 Fairview Street, Southeast, North Canton, Ohio. I want to speak to uh, item AE regarding uh, Ordinance 80-2022. Salaries. Before I uh, speak to that, I'm going to read you a portion of our charter, Section 4.04, .04, Salaries and Bonds. The council shall have the power to fix the compensation of its members and that of the mayor, the director of administration, the director of finance, the director of law, officers of the municipality, of each job classification and the members of any board or commission of the municipality, whether elected, appointed, or chosen. And I'll repeat the first phrase there. Council shall have the power. Within this uh, salary increases, which I will add that are a little breathtaking, but my focus is on uh, Compensation of elected officials. Section 2F1. Members of city council shall be paid a monthly rate equal to the minimum and earnable salary designated by the Ohio Public Employees Retirement System OPERS. That's illegal. This council body cannot delegate away its authority. How will citizens ever know when a salary a council gets a salary increase? It's never announced. The public cannot come up and speak for or against it. And further, with no ordinance supporting that increase, if a citizen were uh, desiring to referendum that salary increase, they couldn't even do that because nobody knows when these increases are coming. This is clearly a violation of the city charter. Now this has gone on for a couple years. I spoke against it a few years ago when it was started. I have recently <coughs> spoken to an attorney. He agrees. This is not kosher. So this needs to be changed. You are not here to earn a pension. And this is in direct pursuit of making sure you get 100% coverage to get a, a, a pension. Now, if you don't meet that dollar income requirement, you do get partial credit. You can get three quarters or half time credit. But continuing to pursue securing a pension for you, and this also presupposes that you're going to be here, I think it's for the 10-year minimum that OPERS will require. So to all of you uh, here on council, if you show up for council, expect to be here 10 years so you qualify for the OPERS salary. This is wrong. And this needs to be removed. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to address council tonight? Last call. Okay, moving on to. Well, did you want to respond now? Uh, moving on to the whole business, uh, Ben, would you please read Ordinance 65-2022. An ordinance amending Chapter 705, Designated Outdoor Refreshment Area, of the codified ordinances of the City of North Canton to reflect recent changes in state law. There. Well, uh, this is the third and final reading uh, regarding some uh, technical changes toward DORA. Uh, the, the principal uh, amendment or change 
has been that we have physically designated the earth, we've designated the physical addresses of the door that mark the door boundary. So and there were a couple of other minor changes, but uh, this is this is it, uh, and brings us into compliance with state law. If there aren't any questions, I would move that we adopt. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, ben, would you please read Ordinance 72-2022. An ordinance to approve and adopt current replacement pages to the codified ordinances of the City of North Camp. Okay, this was John. John is out. Um, Daryl would be the vice chair. Yeah, Daryl, you are the sub chair there. Hmm. Would you like me to? Why don't you go ahead because you do a better job summarizing it than I will. Uh, so we borrow a number of provisions of our local code from, from state code. Yeah. And at, once a year, uh, council's office staff goes through and updates those codes to make sure we still match state law. This is just the annual update. This is, and this is done annually. Correct. Are there any questions? If not, uh, then I'll move the adoption of the third reading of Ordinance 72-22. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Ben, would you please read Ordinance 76-2022. <clears throat> An ordinance authorizing the vacation of one, all of a 10-foot wide alley between 415 Portage Street Northwest and the associated garage to the south. Two, all of an 11 foot wide alley between 401 Porter Street Northwest and 341 Porter Street Northwest. And three, all of an 11 foot wide alley between 337 Porter Street Northwest and 329 Porter Street Northwest, located within the corporate limits of the city of North Camp. Ben, could you read that with the parcel numbers in it? I'm just kidding. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you really want. <laughs> I'm totally sure. Now we've discussed this in the, uh, we had a, a planning meeting about it, our public hearing meeting about it. We've discussed it uh, before. There's nothing new. This is, um, as is, any problems worked out were um, already discussed. So I uh, move. Go before ahead. you move, yeah, uh, have we had any additional resident input regarding the proposal? Mm, I've heard none. No. Councilman's heard none? Nope. No. Okay, very good. Okay. All right, go make your motion. Um, I move we adopt. I will second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. <coughs> ben, would you please read uh, Resolution 79-2022. A resolution adopting the Solid Waste Management Plan for the Stark, Tuscarawas, Wayne Joint Solid Waste Management District. All right, Jamie Rubishlar, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Uh... Thank you, President Stroya. So I think we all pretty much uh, remember this. Um, every county is required to adopt a waste management plan, and so we are just voting to reform the plan that has been presented to us. So nothing new has changed, so I move that we adopt it. Or I move that, yeah. Stroya seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Ben, would you please read Ordinance 80-2022? An ordinance amending various provisions of Chapter 155 personnel regulations of the codified ordinances of the City of North Canton to modify various personnel rules and regulations in the titles and compensation levels of certain personnel. All right. So this sets the maximum salary cap for each position. They are the exempt positions only, none of the uh, union positions. Uh, these positions increase automatically by Social Security's cost of living which was released on October 13th at a rate of 8.7%. It's also uh, increasing a uniform allowance and adding some different uh, position titles. So there's one for, uh, or two positions for code enforcement coordinator, one for community outreach manager, uh, IT systems and public policy analysts. Those are the new positions. And then it also uh, adjusts for the wages for city council so that those will stay in line with the OPER's minimum. Questions? Seeing none, I'll make a motion that we pass. Before you once. go, let me ask a question. Got yes. it, uh, Mr. McKinney. Uh, during the public speaks, uh, 
Um, I was struck by uh, Mr. Osborne's comments and that he states that uh, this is a violation of our charter. Reality is, it isn't. And I think it's important that the public know that. The charter says that council shall fix the compensation. It does not say how it shall fix or what the methodology is to fix it. It's really pretty simple if you want to know what the council salary is. You either A, look at the ordinance, or you call the clerk. Shocking that someone would actually make an inquiry as to what that salary is. And it should be noted that that salary legislation does have a termination point on it and will be revisited by council at some point in the future. I also find it somewhat interesting that uh, Mr. Osborne claims that the public has no remedy. Well, the reality is it does. The charter, previously referenced, provides for both referendum and initiative. Really pretty simple. But I think the public also needs to understand that uh, when we look at compensation, Compensation isn't necessarily about just hitting a retirement date. A session ago or a term ago, and actually in response to Mr. Osborne, who wanted more competition on council, we concluded that the research suggested, and I use the word suggested, that you had your most competitive races when two things happened. The first is you had a compensation level that was attractive, and the second was you had a four-year term. Mr. Osborne has opposed both. Ying yang. I don't know what the what the necessary answer is, but what I can tell you is that uh, stating that this is a violation of the charter is simply not true. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Clarifications? Make a motion that we uh, pass. Or 80-2022. Volts. volts seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Ben, would you please read Ordinance 81-2022. An ordinance amending Chapter 137, Department of Police, of the Codified Ordinances of the City of North Canton, specifically Section 137.04, Personnel, in order to increase the authorized number of police patrolmen and full-time dispatchers. David. Okay. So, because police and fire are civil service, uh, they have personnel caps that are set by City Council. Uh, the schools are requesting some more SROs, safety resource officers. They were previously had. Um, the SRO program was first enacted. They added a clause to the police caps that said, this is the cap unless you have funding from an outside source. Now, it makes it hard to keep track of that cap. And this proposal is just to raise the cap to straight 25, which it should be one more than we need to cover the two requested SROs and cut the other clause about if you have the funding from outside source, so Chief Kemp would be able to hire the patrolman he needs within the budget that council sets for their department and fill the SROs, and he can assign that to a patrolman as he deems necessary. Perfect. Thoughts, questions? I'll make a motion that we pass Ordinance 81-2022. Second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Ben, would you please read Resolution 82-2022. A resolution to acknowledge the rates and fees utilized to establish the budget for the 2023 fiscal year. Okay, Stephanie. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so uh, this is just the rates that you can think of from renting this property to water rates to pool rates, just any rate that you can think of uh, throughout the year. This is what that does. So we set those rates, and this is just a resolution to accept them. So I move to adopt. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Opposed? Motion carries. Ben, would you please read Ordinance 83-2022. An ordinance authorizing appropriations for current expenses and other expenditures and related one-time permanent transfers of monies made to various funds for the period beginning January 1, 2023 and ending December 31, 2023. Stephanie. Okay, we've had a number of meetings about this. We had our committee meeting, which talked about the budget, uh, really looking at that bigger picture. And then we had a first reading, and I don't believe we had any questions at that point. Um, so this is the second reading, and then we'll have one more final reading. Um, again, if you look online at the budget book for NorthKittenOhio.gov, that's the button for budget book, it really has everything that you wanted to look at. So if you need detail on something or you need to know, how many police cars there might be or um, what we're thinking about doing to dog what everything is in there um, and then of course we have our director of finance uh, our director of operations uh, that we could always reach out to does the director of finance have any other questions or concerns at this moment i received no other question later okay yeah, thank you. does anybody else have any other questions or concerns no. okay then i move to adopt the second reading the vote will second all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Ben, would you please read Ordinance 84-2022. An ordinance authorizing the Director of Administration to advertise and receive bids and authorizing the Mayor upon Board of Control approval to enter into a contract for the 2023 Street Resurfacing Program at a cost not to exceed $350,000 and declaring the same to be an emergency. This is the 2023 reef surfacing program. Um, I'm going to uh, make a motion to postpone Ordinance 84 2022 um, to the next council meeting. We vote seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Right, going on to new business, Ben, would you please read Ordinance 85 2022? An ordinance authorizing the direct authorizing and directing the Director of Administration of the City of North Canton to file a petition for annexation of territory owned wholly by the Commissioners of Stark County, Ohio, and adjacent to the City of North Canton, as permitted under Ohio Revised Code Section 709.16, and declaring the same to be an emergency. Okay. Daryl, I am going to make a motion to postpone this, but you're welcome to begin the discussion if you'd like. We can discuss it when we bring it back. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to make a motion that we postpone 85, 20, Ordinance 85 2022 to the next council meeting. The vote will second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> motion carries. Uh, ben, would you please read Ordinance 86 2022? An ordinance amending Chapter 1310 contractor registration, specifically Section 1310.08 work without permits slash registration of the codified ordinances of the city of North Canton to correct references to other code sections and declaring the same to be an emergency. Okay, Daryl, same thing, I'm gonna Did make them, okay. Um, I'm gonna move that we postpone ordinance 86-2022 till the next council meeting. The vote will second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Ben, would you please read ordinance 87-2022. An ordinance authorizing the Director of Finance of the City of North Canton to make final appropriation amendments for current expenses and related one-time advances and or permanent transfers of monies made to various funds needed during the fiscal year ending December 31, 2022, and within available resources in order to balance and close the fiscal year. Stephanie. Uh, again, we've talked about this, and this is just what we do at the end of each year to make sure everything balances. Correct, Director Finance. <laughs> any other any other things you'd want to add at this point? No. Okay. Then I move to adopt. For both seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> okay. Moving on to department reports. Um, Director of Administration, Patrick. Uh, thank you. Uh, would, uh, just I'd like to remind Council if you get any uh, inquiries concerning. Uh, leaves, you know, mm -hmm. leaves in the street, leaves, 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 lots of leaves. Um, uh, you know, we do have uh, ordinances on the books, something that we should be talking about next year. Uh, it is a responsibility of the homeowner to remove leaves from the curb and gutter in front of their 
property. Uh, I don't think that's ever really been communicated over the years on a regular basis to let people know. Um, it is problematic if uh, you sweep the leaves up once they reach the street. They are considered um, a hazardous material. They cannot go to uh, a leaf recycling because they pick up stones and other debris that might have carcinogens on them. Um, and they have to go to uh, down to Canton's uh, waste treatment facility. And uh, those, every time that the uh, street sweeper goes down there, it's a you know, round trip probably two hours until they, when it goes 20 miles an hour, you know, so <laughs> it, it's a ways to get out there and come back. And they have to empty it and wash it out so that none of those things drip on the roadways on the way back. There's a lot of regulations that concern it. And uh, it costs us uh, just shy of about $600 every time to have them clean it up. So um, we do, you know, like when you see in the spring when we kind of do um, the street sweeping, we're picking up all that loose debris, gravel, grit that accumulates over the winter. I mean, you can get a lot of that mm -hmm. in that truck before you have to go down. But leaves, <coughs> they fill up that just as they fill up your leaf bags, just as they fill up your lawnmower bags, they fill up those street sweepers just as much. So uh, I think it's something that we should start a, you know, mm -hmm. as we're looking forward uh, to the next uh, edition of some of our staff. This is, you know, communications with the, with the uh, constituencies is high on our list of uh, informing the residents of what it is that we can and cannot do and how they can help. So that was, I wanted to get that out there. Uh, second, I wanted to let you know that the, uh, you know, obviously the, the, the pool, the dogwood pool is closed its season and uh, traditionally at this time we get together with the Y and review our management contract, which we have done. That was something that I put into effect four years ago. Next year uh, will be the fifth year of that five-year contract. And uh, we'll need to revisit that. Uh, I think it's been working uh, splendidly uh, since it was rewritten. And uh, the uh, Y reported our best year ever, as far as anybody can tell record-wise, with uh, I think approximately 3,500 uh, members, uh, staggering number, um, and the number of visits uh, compared to uh, you know, half a dozen years ago or so uh, uh, up as well. So the, the changes that we've made to try to enhance the user experience, I believe the numbers bear out that they work. Uh, because the visits are constant, they're up there. Uh, we did raise membership fees. Um, last year we did instituted some other control mechanisms where um, uh, we allowed, it was members only on the weekends and day passes had to come during the week. That went over very well. I think it's reflected in the numbers. So the, the end result is that we had, a, we had a, a gain, a profit if you will, uh, at the, uh, pool that was the intent of the of the agreement was to to uh, gear management to in, to get that and as part of an amendment that we had done to that contract uh, just a couple years ago uh, we agreed that the uh, that the profits would be split 40 40 20 40 percent to the Y 40 percent to the city's general pool operating account and the other 20% to uh, rebuilding the Dogwood Pool facility, the uh, welcome center, the, the bathrooms, the, you know, that, that uh, opening that you, you pass through to get into the pool. And so uh, the rough numbers was approximately 140,000-ish. Uh, and so the Y would retain 40%. The other 60% comes to the city, but 20% of that's going to go to that pool fund. So we know that with Catherine's application to uh, the state capital, we received $300,000 grant towards that project. Um, and uh, with other uh, things that we have going, we think that that's a, 
project that we can make happen for 2023. So the plan at this time is when the uh, pool closes for the season next year, which is Labor Day, that uh, uh, we would be in a position to demo the building and get the, the shell up you know, by winter and then finish the interior build out over the winter and be ready to open by Memorial Day. So that's the game plan. Uh, we're in, uh, reaching out, working through an architect to come up with uh, designs. It's uh, collaboration with the Y, their personnel, getting to understand what is needed to optimally move people in and out of that facility in a more efficient manner getting them admitted into the pool, getting them being able to use the restroom facilities and changing facilities and be able to process people. And then, of course, with the concession stands, being able to operate a, a better concession stand that offers more variety uh, to that. Uh, I will also put out a caution, though, that um, as we get the word out for next year, I've noticed since the five years that I've been here that um, the pool recreation chairs, the lounges, the chases, um, are not being taken care of in a manner that is respectful. The, uh, every year we're, we have been replacing um, you know, a couple hundred chairs, lounges, uh, and I, I don't know what, you know, I understand what some people are doing to them, uh, and that we, this isn't just something that we can continue to keep doing. The costs of these things are rising substantially. You know, it's, of course, you know the price to everything to the government is more than what it is to uh, John Q. Public, it seems. And those uh, chases, you know, cost you know well over a hundred dollars a piece. And when you drop, you have to replace two hundred of them. It's a lot of money. Uh, and so we think that what we're going to go with this year is we're going to be encouraging people to bring their own chases, their own chair, their own lounge to sit on. Uh, uh, that way I'm sure they'll be respectful of that property and, and you know, take that in and out uh, as needed. So that, that's the thinking at this time. I wanted to share that with you, as raw as it may be. Uh, but uh, it is something that we've been uh, frustrated with over the last five years. I've been looking at it. I'm sure it's been continuing before then, but the cost of goods are just so much higher. I'm just not sure we can afford to keep doing it. And that concludes my report. All right. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, Deputy Director of Administration, Catherine. Well, I have some exciting news. Daryl, I said there was a surprise today <laughs> to share along the lines of parks. So I'll read a, press, a bit of a press release we received from the Ohio Parks and Rec Association. Uh, they proudly have announced the 2022 Awards of Excellence and Dogwood's Possibility Playground has been awarded the first place award in the Capital Improvements category. Yay! Wow. Yay. We've got the first award we've ever won for the Way city of North go. And the Woody Woodward is the executive director. He just basically says parks and rec professionals throughout Ohio work every day to improve the quality of life of the people they serve. This effort of Dogwood Park's Possibility Playground is a shining example of the kind of work we are pleased to be able to present this award to. So this is voted on by park professionals all throughout the state of Ohio. There's a criteria of eight categories. It is community impact, achievement, innovation, execution, sustainability, resourcefulness, storytelling, and then the overall project. We had to kind of submit something from each category and pictures and this also then places us in a category. All first place winners um, are presented this award January 31st at a banquet in um, Sandusky at Calipari um, Convention Center. And we are up in the running for what they call kind of a best of show um, type of award, which is uh, called the Governor's Award. Hmm. So uh, we, we were there last year, oh. Christina being chair of Parks and Rec, and I went up the Kalahari for the o Oprah, they call it, Ohio Parks and Recs uh, Award, and we saw it. It's a big deal, and everybody's <laughs> standing there from all over the whole state. It's really exciting, all these park professionals, and you just kind of 
wait and then they announce it. So, you know, yeah. fingers crossed. I'll share with you a little bit of like what I submitted and what they voted on. So in community impact, you know, we talked about, we didn't have this. We just didn't, the gap, you know, existed in not having an adaptive um, play space in our community with all the wood mulch playgrounds. And so uh, the real impact there was, you know, uh, bridging that gap. And then an achievement, we talked about bringing members of the community together to achieve this, that, you know, we um, had the North Canton Public Library with the Story Walk, and uh, they're now adding, we're gonna be adding a new little library that's gonna be coming soon. And we talked about working with Akron Children's Hospital and the schools. In innovation, we talked about, you know, we took some land that was unused, centrally located in the city, former ice skating rink. And then um, we did a really, we did not segregate the adaptive play experience, but we integrated it and we talked about how, you know, we just had old play structures there and a two stall bathroom from 1980 and, you know, <laughs> put in a new one, better parking. Uh, execution, everybody knows we, would, we did it through COVID. We talked about all the ups and downs of getting it done and all the people involved with that. Sustainability, we talked about the, how the stormwater is being collected in the bioswells to make sure that it's cleaning before entering into the retention pond. And we brought up about how we partnered when Mayor chaired the AEP um, Community <coughs> Savers, the uh, elect AEP Electric Savers program, and we got that uh, award for um, using sustainability efficient uh, lighting. And that we engaged Davy Tree also in, in trying, you know, to give us an assessment on the trees out there to not have to take down, you know, any more than we had to. Resourcefulness, we talked about how all the money came together from the Nature Works grant, the capital funds from the state, the Hoover Foundation, the GoFundMe page started by community member Bruce Connery, city funds, private donations, North Can Library, the AEP grant. Storytelling, we talked about it just, you know, being able to bring not just all children together to play, but it's intergenerational play as well. When you have grandparents that may have wheelchairs or crutches and walkers, and they can, you know, come on, you know, uh, into the play area. And really, I think what I, I was scared, I didn't know we'd win because there's a lot of adaptive parks, you know, today people are realizing that, you know, it's a real need. But what I said in this too was if you drove by this summer, and I think we all did, it was crowded, like every single day from people all over the the area and I said you know we haven't had in this community go back to the impact I talked about we lost the Hoover company we lost our largest employer 3,000 employees at its height and it was an emotional and a financial impact to our community so not only did the city lose money but we had multiple generations that worked there and people were just down and we were just kind of sad and so for you know since the 80s you know, we really hadn't had anything new, and we when, once we developed this, this park that was intended to bring children together, brought an entire community together, brought people outside of the community, our community, and it's truly shown the possibilities. So it's kind of lifted us up to say, like, we're back, baby. You know, <laughs> we're coming back, we're doing new development, the schools, the park, all the other economic development, so. That storytelling wanted for us, and we're pretty excited. So keep your fingers crossed on January 31st. It'll be really exciting to get that governor's award. They I also think, make a donation. I think you have your acceptance page done. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm gonna write it. I'm gonna have it. I'm just gonna will it out there. You know, just positive thank you. Um, that's all I have tonight. Thanks. Thanks. That's thank a big you. one. That's great. Yeah. Uh, Mayor Walter. Yes. Thank you very much. Would you repeat the the award again for us? The, yep. the award that it's um, it's the capital improvement award. Capital improvement award. Well, thank you very much. And if you reflect back on this, <clears throat> uh, this was an idea that council came. It was so very supportive of, and it took us through uh, our COVID years and through all the the things that we went through to bring this idea to reality. Again, thank you, Catherine, for for managing this. This and this was one of our first, I think, major accomplishments this community had the support of council uh, come out of COVID. And uh, we should, we're very proud of that. And uh, I just want to know what's our next project. But we'll hold that off, okay? Because we're not going to stop there. But thank you very much. I do have some comments to make because uh, there have been a number of things that uh, have transpired with my involvement. And uh, first of all, I, uh, we had a, uh, you know, due to the weather that we had on Friday, November the 11th, many veterans uh, ceremonies were held indoors. Uh, and so we had our veteran ceremony on Friday, November the 11th at 11 o'clock in the lobby. 
well attended. We had probably 15 or so veterans that were there, plus other people, uh, family and visitors. But uh, uh, I wanted to first say something too. I believe in previous councils or in previous administrations, uh, the recognizing the city of North Canton as a Purple Heart uh, city, maybe the paperwork was there, but I'm in contact with our local representative here in North Can in Stark County. Uh, didn't seem like we ever had a proclamation to really identify ourselves in support of our veterans. And I just wanted to share with you that also on November the 11th, I presented a proclamation to the audience recognizing the city of North Canton. That, uh, one, it was Purple Heart Day, but also Purple Heart City. And frankly, it, it was in recognition of the one estimated 1.8 million veterans who have been bestowed, bestowed this prestigious medal. Uh, the mayor of North Canton uh, desires to join the many other cities in the nation to become a Purple Heart City. So I just want to share that proclamation with you, submitted to the agency that asked us to, uh, uh, not asked us, but uh, inquired about our participation. So uh, I wanted to make that known uh, also. And during the uh, North Canton Mayor Veteran or the North Canton Veterans Day ceremony. Uh, we titled it, as many of you all know, how honoring all who served. And I just wanted to recognize a few things that we have. I wanted to thank uh, again Reverend Kara Stoltz Costello, who presented the invocation. Uh, she's the Tuscarawas District Superintendent of the United Methodist Church, and she and her husband were also the pastors at Faith United right here on 9th Street. And she has a son serving in the National Guard right now in Honduras on a mission there. So I thought the connection there was great. Hoover uh, students going through, and her oldest son, Eli, is in the service. But I also wanted to recognize, uh, we always have a good uh, working relationship with our North Canton Middle School. And it gives those kids an opportunity to, uh, we usually select three or four essays. Actually, I let the school do that. And it's called Patriot's Pen Project this time. And I think they had a little prompting by the VFW, but uh, to hear their essays to talk about uh, what patriotism means and service to our country was very heartwarming. And again, I wanted to thank these four eighth grade students who presented. Uh, M Emily Epperly, uh, Jacob Groh, Catherine Hayford, and Lydia McHolm. They did a great job. And folks, I just want to recognize the veterans that work for the city of North Canton. So please bear with me. We have Jim Davis in Fire and EMS, served in the Marine Corps. Cliff Lee, Fire and EMS, United States Army. We have Jason Myers, Fire, EMS, in the, uh, uh, in the Army. Uh, Doug Taylor, working in Fire and EMS, uh, Marine Corps. From the Police Department, we have Officer <coughs> Scott Carroll, Air Force. Uh, Spencer Zabara, Police Department, Marines Reserve. Uh, Zachary Fullwalter, Police Department, National Guard. By the way, he is on deployment right now. Uh, he's on his second deployment, if I'm correct. Uh, we welcomed him back about a year or so ago, but uh, he's been called up again. So our thoughts are with Zach. Nicholas Kakoulis, Police Department, Knight Navy. Uh, Frank Kemp, Jr., our Chief of Police, uh, National Guard. Our Patrick Lewis from the Police Department, serving in the Marine Reserve. Jacob Tate, Air Force. Mike Booth from the Street Department, U.S. Army. Uh, Bailey, uh, excuse me, Bailey Allen, uh, works in our Parks Department, also serving in the Air Force. Uh, Jason Steiniger, who works at the water treatment plant, served in the U.S. Army, and Ben Ickes uh, in our permits, served in the National Guard. So uh, I thank all those uh, gentlemen at, at, that are employed here with the City of North Camp and for their service. And I think, Mr. Mayor, I think you also served in the Navy. Yes, sir, so I thank did. you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And uh, uh, I just wanted to share uh, just a closing thought from that uh, uh, from that ceremony, if you'll bear with me. Uh, the presentation by myself was, it's called The Legacy of the American Veteran. And I just, in summary, I just wanted to share my closing paragraph, if you'll bear with me. This is the legacy of American service members, a legacy of service and sacrifice that must be <coughs> preserved and passed on to future generations so that concepts of duty, honor, and country <coughs> are never forgotten. An American philosopher once wrote, those that cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. The danger in forgetting the sacrifices made by those who have earned the right to the title of veteran is that 
as a community and a nation may forget the high cost of freedom, and we must never forget that. And I would be neglectful on my part to recognize Ms. Council Member Waring for her daughter's service. In the Marine Corps. Yes. <laughs> Couldn't sway him to go to the Navy. No, second but, uh, lieutenant. <laughs> uh, second lieutenant. But uh, there again, and, and if any of you other, uh, you. have family members in the service, uh, again, thank you for it, because you can never say thank you enough, as I believe. Maybe we'll have you present next year, too. Oh, yeah. Okay, I think we might reel yeah, yeah. you in. Uh, and uh, as I continue on, please bear with me. Uh, there's another proclamation that I have uh, that will be presented actually tomorrow, but I'll share it with you tonight. Uh, Father Thomas Sabula, the senior chaplain at Walsh University, is moving on. He has served the, the Walsh University ministry for over 10 and a half years. And I just would, I'll, I, the, I have the proclamation here. I will not go through it all, okay? But uh, I would like to just say that uh, this, this portion. After a decade of faithful service to Walsh University, Senior Chaplain Franklin Thomas Subella, Subella has been appointed by the Most Reverend David J. Bonner, Bishop of Youngstown Diocese, to serve as the Administrator of St. Louis Parish in Louisville, and also Sacred Heart Parish in Harrisburg, and that's effective November the 25th. In concluding, I wrote this. During the years of selfless service to Walsh University and the greater North Canton community, Father Sabula has trusted in, this, in his Lord's call and guided others by the gospel, striving to inspire all to become the light of the world, the salt of the earth, and to be a part of the solution of a turbulent world. Therefore, be it proclaimed, I, Stephen B. Wilder, Mayor for the City of North Canton, on behalf of the city, uh, do hereby proclaim November the 15th, 2022, as Father Thomas Sibula Day, in celebration and gratitude of his dedicated service to Walsh University and the North Canton community as he goes on to fulfill his new role and discover new opportunities to help others. So thank you, Father Sabula. I also want to thank the voters for participating in the 2022 mid-year term, uh, mid-year elections. Uh, I want to especially thank uh, the members of our community who served on the Charter Advisory Review Board. Uh, they presented several sections, uh, 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 items to council. Two out of three, uh, or three were presented to the voters, and two out of three of those pro proposals passed. But I thank you, all of them, for their time and their willingness to present these charter items uh, of concern and proposed changes uh, for the betterment of our uh, city and for our government. In closing, on Saturday, November the 12th, I had the privilege to attend the Marine Corps Lee uh, uh, McKinley Detachment Number 277 in celebration of the 247th uh, ver birthday of the United States Marine Corps. I was uh, flattered on behalf of the city. I accepted a certificate of appreciation of what they, uh, what our city has uh, done in so association in supporting the uh, Marine Corps Lee. And finally, uh, our North Canton Farmers Market okay has moved indoors uh, we still have about 30 vendors and um, they'll be in operation of course you know this uh, Wednesday and uh, they're gonna have two food trucks out there but I told Jenna Groschmidt from Know Your Roots uh, Ohio that uh, I would put uh, a special announcement in for them and also just so you know November 23rd they're gonna have free meals available uh, free meals to go at the uh, North Canton um, Farmers Market and if anybody wants more information, they can just go on their website at knowyourrootsohio at gmail.com. So thank you for indulging me uh, for these, uh, these uh, items of interest for me and for you. Thank you. Good. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, finance czar, Gina. Um, well, the finance department, since wrapping up next year's budget preparation, we are now working backwards on the current year again, and we're closing up the budget line items of open POs and working on open enrollment for our employees insurance. So we'll be finalizing that in November. We were able to secure a 13 month um, premium quote, so it will take us through the end of next year, and then we'll be back to a calendar year, so that will help our budget as well. And our income tax is still up. 13%. 13%. Holding strong. <laughs>
same time. <coughs> <coughs> Council Clerk, Ben. Um, as you all uh, are aware, the requirement for rental properties to register takes effect January 1st. Um, however, today the portal went live, so any landlords who uh, want to get a head start on it and register early can do so now. Uh, it is up live on our website and through that same portal, um, residents can also now apply for their uh, burn permits if they are somebody who likes to have backyard fires. And uh, as I think I mentioned last time, um, we have great hopes to expand access to more city services through this same online portal. Any feedback from any registrar? What, what do you say, registrants at this point? Uh, we have only had four so far. Okay. So okay. Uh, not particularly heavy use yet. Okay. <laughs> nice. Okay, let's go to council reports. Uh, board one. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Um, Mr. Mayor, that was a fantastic report you gave, and so I want to yeah. echo my thanks to uh, my friends, family, fellow citizens that are veterans. So um, I was at City Hall uh, Friday morning, and I was uh, impressed by uh, the fact that we had gotten that spun in uh, to being inside so quickly. So uh, so uh, wish I could have attended the event, but uh, I saw some pictures online that looked great. So Thank you. I um, also wanted to echo your uh, thoughts about the election, but for some other reasons. So. Um, we had some items passed that support local businesses, businesses that are yes, thank you. I in, yeah, in Ward 2, okay. and that's all right, I'm, I'm picking it up for you. So uh, in Ward 2, um, also in Ward 1. So for me, um, election night was, uh, it, it couldn't have gone better. Um, mm -hmm. I think this shows that uh, our community so supports and embraces local businesses that are here or will be coming here. So I just wanted to thank the North Canton voters for that. And, and again, thank you, uh, Tasha, for joining us this evening. So yeah, that's it. That's that's good. Good. All right, Ward 2, David. Okay. Uh, Ms. Verena, thank you. Uh, a lot of work and effort goes into putting that together. Uh, took many hands and many hours, but from somebody that understands the person that's coordinating all that and putting that together and communicating that, on top of having a full-time job, was a major effort. So uh, thank you for that. I think the city is much better now that we have Dogwood Park in place, and that's the first of many to come. So appreciate your effort and work on that. Um, last meeting, uh, committee of the whole meeting, when we were talking about uh, registration of contractors, I'd asked Ben to put together a, a way to find it a little easier on our website. So if you'll bring that up, <clears throat> previously all we had was a PDF listing all of the contractors in order. So now what we have on our website is a searchable list for our contractors. So you can search by trade. You can pick, uh, okay, HVAC. And then you can see on the side the states that those are registered in our community to do work. So you can sort, if you want to look local, you can go to Ohio. And then you can break it down and say, I only want to deal with people in North Canton if that's what you choose. And it'll bring up the contractors registered with the city to do work in North Canton. So Ben, thank you for putting that together. There's also uh, our website on the page, uh, a link to get directly to that. And we can add some more because I thought it was a big challenge and because of your expertise and your knowledge, you put this together very quickly mm -hmm. and efficiently. So I think That's it's really gonna be nice. benefit to the residents. Mm -hmm. Call it. Yeah, this is fantastic. Uh, was well, a good idea. Um, you scared me at first, but when I realized how to do it, it all came together. So. <laughs> I think it's going to help the residents, especially when you're searching for somebody that's qualified to do work, that's going to pull the permits, that's going to do a good job, and you can feel confident that they're registered with the city and that your job or action that you need to have completed on your home is going to be taken care of correctly. Thank you, Ben. And that's my report. All right, thank you, David. Ward 3, Stephanie. Okay. Um, thank you, Kathy, again. I am so excited. I know we were talking about this a few weeks ago. I think one of the coolest things about this project, though, is it, is it didn't start how we thought it was going to end. And I love that we were able to, to rethink, regroup, and switch it. Like, we weren't so like, nope, this is the way it has to be. This is what we want. We just we switched it after COVID, during COVID, after the needs of the community funding um and that was what was so great i think is our adaptability and i think that 
we haven't seen that sometimes before, and I really have seen that a lot with this administration. And it's so important when you start to see, um, I think communities move forward as they need to have that. So thank you for that, and I, I, I think we've got it. I think we've got the grand prize, so. <laughs> the optimism and positivity. I don't know what they're not gonna see if we don't have it, so. Great, great job. Um, Mayor, thank you for saying so much about veterans. Um, I love that you listed the names, and I think I didn't realize how many. And uh, I work with a number of nonprofits where their job is to find jobs for veterans. Um, my husband works is a board member for the SAM Center, which helps veterans that are in need. And I think they're, they're giving away 1,400 turkeys for in our community this, this year. Um, so my daughter was home on Veterans Day. She would not wear her uniform because she doesn't feel like she's earned that yet. She's active duty and yeah. she doesn't feel like that. But what she did say was she couldn't believe how many different signs were on different doors in our community, how many, you can go to this app and, and you could get free coffee at Gecko or Cantata Taco was doing a taco mm -hmm. and she was just so impressed of how many, how much support you know there was. And, so, say, so thank you for saying that. Um, she deploys in March or April, and I think I'll have a whole new aspect as a family member of what that means um, at that point. So thank you for that. And thank you, Tasha, for being here. You didn't have to stay. So if, <laughs> most speakers do pick up their bags and leave. So um, thank you. I know you have a son at home, and your nights are, are precious, and you're asked to do a lot after hours. So thank you. And even when you said, I want to be mindful of your agenda, um, I know with the food bank you can go on and on and on. And we love hearing that. And so thank you for just um, for being here. And Jamie, you're right. Thank you for the voters for saying that we believe in, in our local businesses and our commission, how important that they do get together and decide on things that they think um, will help us make more efficient. I mean, one of those that passed will hopefully help Gina, right? And make us more efficient and not have to um, waste time on different things. So mm -hmm. thank you. All right, Daryl. Thank you. Uh, just a couple quick quick points. Uh, reiterate uh, Jamie's comments about the issues and tie it, to thread it to what uh, Gina has said. Uh, those local issues demonstrate community support for retail businesses. We're up 13% in large part because we have an economic development strategy that puts an emphasis on supporting that type of operation. If you look at our numbers, historically, uh, we have weathered uh, the COVID crisis uh, in relatively good health. I can tell you from looking at other communities like Dublin that have a preponderance of office space, which is now empty, mm -hmm. they're struggling with a budget. I should use the word struggling with. They're having to reassess how they how they yeah. spend money, <laughs> and uh, we're in a pretty pretty good shape. Um, a couple a year or so ago, and I think I can speak for all of us here. If you'd have mentioned dogwood, uh, we would have been embarrassed. Uh, it was a major fail out there at the pool. This administration had nothing to do with that. This council had nothing to do with it. But we acknowledged it. But I think it illustrates that the community, and this goes to Mr. Osborne's earlier comments, has a choice. It can choose to be managed by mediocrity. And when you have mediocrity, you get dogwood, pool. When you choose talent, You have a capital improvement award for Dogwood Park. You have a discussion about planning and executing the brand new pool house. Clear choice, in my view. When you choose talent, you have people who can write legislation on the fly at a council meeting, people who can correct a website within a week based upon a councilman's excellent suggestion, and people who can stand up your rental registration with a user-friendly interface. So I think the community, I, I think the community has a choice. 
and how it wants to be managed. Mediocrity or excellence? I go with the latter. And I congratulate everybody who has contributed that higher level of performance over the last year. Really exceptional. One team, one way forward. All right. Um, a lot of stuff said. I'm not going to repeat a lot of it, but I like to talk, so I'm going to talk. Um, Mayor, that was quite a list of veterans that you mentioned and read, so I appreciate that, and thank you, veterans. Um, Tasha, thank you very much for speaking. What uh, the food bank does is, is amazing, and I'm glad you were able to share uh, your time with us tonight, although you didn't have to stay this late. I was part of the community. I don't mind. We appreciate that. Uh, Catherine, yeah, amazing job um, at the park. Uh, that's, I'm glad that you're getting recognized, and I hope that's on 31st. I hope that you can. And anyone can come. Yeah, that would be, we should do that. That would be great. Brian Hill will come. Yep. Can we get a police escort? <laughs> I, I bet we could. Chief? <laughs> yeah. We might be able to make that happen. A bus. Um, but that's. That's very exciting, and mm -hmm. you know, there's other canvases, so to speak, for you to maybe make an impact on in the future as well, and that's exciting. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very excited about Dogwood Pool. Um, I worked there, let's go, let's say 20 plus years ago, <laughs> and uh, it needed redone then. I mean, that place, working in that place and cleaning up and, and looking at all the things that would go wrong on a daily basis in that pool house, that's very exciting to me. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, there were some exciting things for, for business that were approved, as Jamie said. And um, I'll just wrap it up by saying buy and support local. So um, I'll have a final call for new business. Yeah, that's a gist. Yep. And then uh, coming up on the 21st, we're going to have a committee of the whole and a regular city council meeting. On the 28th, we will have no meeting. On December the 1st, we will have our organizational meeting. Um, on December 5th, we'll have a public hearing uh, for the permeal uh, paver driveway. And on the 12th, we'll have a public hearing for signage code. And I will entertain a motion to adjourn. The vote moves. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Adjourn. Oh. Yeah, but we don't need to do that. I'll get on YouTube. Oh, okay, so wait, we are. He says we are. You guys are Is that great? Took it down, and now you've got the property. Okay. When was that? You've been over there. I've been the last time I've been with the Yeah, I've been working from home for two and a half years. So we're coming back on like the 7th or something?